Hello everyone, I am here with Cole Tilly and today we're going to show you how to install a double din stereo in a Prius. Is there a Walmart nearby? Pardon? Is there a Walmart nearby? This one we got to get a new radio. Thing don't work right. So to update the severely outdated navigation system, we'll be installing a head unit that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'll be able to retain most of the steering wheel controls. We'll run the USB extension cables and aux cord into the central compartment. And we'll actually be able to tap into the microphone in the ceiling. All right, so while we look for a Walmart, I'm going to take the wiring harness that I pulled out of my Chevy Prism. I'm going to pull all the wires off of this and connect it to the new wires. And it looks like it's pretty straightforward. Just match up each color. The only inconsistency is that there is a blue wire and the harness that attaches to the stereo has a blue and white wire. Ugh. All right, so now that everything's disconnected, we can start joining wires. I think I will start with the purple one. Got a few butt connectors left, so you can just get these at Walmart. And you can just crimp them together like that. And make sure oh, you put in some oomph into it. That way so they don't come off. There we are. So just keep doing that for the rest of the wires. All right, so I just finished here. So the only two wires that I have left is a pink one. This one doesn't, so I'm just gonna leave it be. There's also a purple one on here that was marked as reverse input. And you can hook up this wire to the positive end of a rear tail light, and then you could have it activate like a, a rear camera. But the Prius already has a rear camera connected to the main screen. And then right here, this is the parking brake bypass. And you only need this for Pioneer head units if you wanna play movies while you drive. And so I just connected the blue to those two wires, the ground wire to the other two ground wires, and then the green one to the green one, which is also marked as parking brake. Before the old stereo head unit can be removed, we have to pull off the surrounding panels, starting with this vent. There we go. I've totally done this before. And there's a screw. Let's unscrew that. There's that first screw. Next is a screw just underneath the steering wheel. And same type as before. This allows the lower panel to be pried off. Oh, there it goes. It looks like that. There's a little tab on the other side over here. There we go. That's the tab I pressed down on. I believe we can just leave dangling. Let's take this part off. Oh, there we go. One more up here. There. And I'm sure we can just set that aside without having to worry about disconnecting the power button. Now I can pull off the next vent panel. Oh, okay, the tab is right there. See that? There we go. After disconnecting this cord, you'll notice yeah. the red triangle appear on the dash, and after you reconnect it, it'll take a couple of hours of driving for it to go away. The final vent panel can be removed more easily when the glove boxes are open. Let's go underneath. Ah, oh, there we go. That's what it needed. Oh, there we go. Awesome. All right, then there's two screws on either side. There we are. All right, okay. This allows me to pull off this compartment. Okay, there we are, and there we go. Now we've got access to these two screws and bolts. Since I already have my screwdriver out, I'll just use that one. But it is, no, nope, I'm using the 10 millimeter socket. Ugh, there we go. There we are. Next, we have to remove the main screen, and there are two 10 millimeter bolts holding it in place. There's the other one. So these bolts are different sizes. This one was holding the main screen in place, and this one was from below the stereo. Now the multifunction display can be taken out. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Wow, so there's the upper screen. Next, there are only two more 10 millimeter bolts that hold the head unit in place. Ooh. There's not much room for the wrench. Oh, there it goes. Now that you untightened it, you could probably yeah. use the other one. Yeah. Okay, actually, oh goodness, we need this resistor. Let me just close that. It almost blew away. 
So these bolts on the top and bottom were the same. All right, Let's see if we can pull this whole thing out now. Oh, wow, there it goes. So now I just need to disconnect this. There we go. So then these will plug into my wiring harness and here's the antenna. Now we can remove four screws that hold the head unit to the metal brackets. There we go, four screws on that end. All right, so now we should be able to take the stereo out of this thing. There's a lot of knobs that keeps catching on. There we go. Ha ha, I have conquered you. <laughs> so this is the new head unit. I took the screen off so that I don't damage it or anything. All right, so it looks like that we just fit this right into there. After I installed the OEM metal brackets, however, I found that the screen didn't fit right behind the new bezel. Plus hmm. it got stuck when I tried to eject the screen. So instead, I decided to try the plastic brackets that came with the kit after all. This time it fit much better. Now these are adjustable and I found after some trial and error that sliding them a bit backwards gave the stereo the best fit. Also, the OEM screws didn't fit in my particular head unit, so I used its own screws that came with it instead. I only have six of them, but that should be enough to hold it in place on each side. Yeah, there we go, those work a lot better. All right, so let's go ahead and connect these. So that just connects to the, well, we might have a problem. So it looks like that adapter didn't work because my grandparents apparently decided to get premium audio for this car and the amp is actually digital. But fortunately, I just happen to have this amp, this amp or this uh, adapter here that converts the analog signal from my stereo to this. So, but yeah, yeah I just happened to have it sitting in, sitting in my, what, 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 why is it so dark, huh? Because someone took quite a while to Whoa, get everything. Whoa, who, who are you? Where's, where's Cole Tilly? He's back in Arkansas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. Um, it took me a little while to figure out what exactly to get, but, but that's besides the point here. So this is the adapter I got. It is the Axis TYTO01. There will be a link for this one as well. So then here, I went ahead and wired it up to the wiring harness that comes from the stereo. So then this will take the analog signal coming from here, send it to this box, to convert it to digital, and then I can have, this has the right connector on it, so I can easily just connect that into there. And then that will send the digital signal to the amplifier so that it can convert it back to analog for the speakers. So the audio probably won't be as pristine, but I like this solution. All right, so the, this is one wire set that comes out, and actually about half of these wires aren't used for some reason. So these cables can be taped off. So the blue and white, the purples, the grays, the oranges, and the whites, those will connect to the wire harness that connects to the stereo. I went ahead and connected the parking brake bypass the exact same way, just still connected the wires. But then there's some wires coming off of the other end of the adapter. So then, We've got this kind of ring of wires here. So as long as you just mark off which wires you don't need, it's basically like matching them. And the instructions didn't mention anything about this black and white wire. So considering that I have to tape off some other wires, I'm just gonna ignore that. Now the second harness that was plugged into the original stereo is for steering wheel control. So we'll deal with that in a minute. And so then I will connect this into my Pioneer radio. So the antenna on this particular unit plugs in right there. And now we can fire up the car. It's still connected. Everything should work just fine. And there we go. And let's go to a station. There we are. There. And so I was able to also go in and test each individual speaker in the car. And so I was able to drag this all around and I can hear the changes in the car. Now the interface also has a volume dial that you can adjust with a screwdriver. And you don't wanna turn this up all the way, otherwise you're gonna peak your speakers. Likewise, you don't wanna turn it down too much, otherwise you're gonna hear a lot of noise when you turn up the stereo. 
Note that there is a significant delay when adjusting this dial. All right, now that we've got some more light, you may have noticed that after disconnecting the old stereo here, that if you hit the climate controls, it just says, check the connection to the air conditioner. Fortunately though, with the kit that I got for installing the double din stereo, it came with this tiny little resistor. And so what we can do with that is take the other connector and we're going to connect it into the top right two wires. If you'd like to splice the resistor to the wires instead, you can check out the instructions here. Note that this is showing the back side of the port. There we go. And before I tape it down and cut the, the leads down, let's restart the car. There we go. We now have the climate controls back. All right, so for the next thing, I'm just going to mount the stereo up in here just for now and put the little trim cover that came with that kit just to hold it in place. So to get the steering wheel controls, I've got the little Axis interface here. Now you want to get the app, the Axis Updater, and this will let you update the firmware and give you the vehicle specific instructions. So just enter in the model of the car. Programming instructions will get to that. So the wiring instructions here. So this thing really confused me because none of the ports look like this and it took me forever to realize that it says, note, the wires may vary between vehicle but the pin location should remain the same. And we are only going to be using these two wires. This is what receives the input from the steering wheel and then of course the, the red and black wires for power. All the rest of these can be just taped off to the side. I went ahead and pulled the red wire out of the connectors down here. So just while I'm making sure that everything's working, I'm going to just twist them together. And then once I'm sure that everything is working, and then we can crimp them all together. All right, so I can either connect the black wire to the rest of the ground wires to the stereo, but then there's also this nice bolt and I'm gonna be wiring in a dash cam. So I'm gonna be using that. So it's a 12 millimeter bolt. It was really stiff to get it loose, but once you have it, you can attach the wire to it and that will give you your ground. Wrap it in there in the direction that it's gonna rotate, which should be and just tighten that. There we go. And now just for testing procedures, I'm gonna take the red wire and attach it to the red wires of the stereo. So from the reverse side, so I've got the resistor plugged into pins nine and 10. So then the black slash green will just go right in there. This can't fit all of the wires, but this will be good just for testing procedures and I am ultimately going to just leave the wires just taped up in there that way if I ever want to sell the car and put the old stereo back in then it won't be much of a problem so and then I'll take the green and orange wire and stick it into pin uh, I believe that is seven yeah pin slash seven so just make sure that none of the wires are touching while we test this. And the final step, according to the instructions, is connecting the next wire over to ground as well. That way the buttons will actually be getting power from the car's battery. Okay, so I've got some extra black wire here. So let me just cut off some of it. And this particular wire has a lot of extra threads. So I'm just gonna take like three or four of them. And then I'll twist off the access and just cut that away. And then the other side won't matter too much since we will be screwing that around the bolt again. Now we can take it over to our grounding bolt over here and tighten it up. And now the black negative wire. And so the final step is just to plug the interface into the back of the stereo. And so for on mine, I have a W slash R port that is wired remote. And don't get it mixed up with the aux port because that's of course for audio, even though they're the exact same jack. So just plug that right in there. There we go. And that's how it will receive the steering wheel controls. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the car. And so let's check out the interface here and we'll start to see a flashing LED light. There we go. There we go. 
So I just had to hit the reset button since I've used this before so far. So the flashing means that it's detecting the stereo and the car. So here it's auto detecting. We won't have to do anything. So it's going through this whole thing. The instructions say exactly what all of those flashes mean exactly. But once we have a solid red light, that means it is done. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. There we go. Okay, so we got a podcast. Okay, so we'll just turn that down and let's try out the steering wheel controls. Volume. There we go. And then the mode button. Switch to a different mode on the stereo. We've got nothing connected to the aux port under there. There's the radio. Now one thing, every time, by default when I was hitting the up arrow, it actually started, it started going down. So we can actually reprogram it to swap the keys individually. And my stereo does not support the push to talk feature. So I can actually remap that as a mute button. Okay, so now we wanna to go to the programming instructions. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is turn the car off and back on again. Off. Turn it back on. And we have 20 seconds to start programming it. So the first thing to do is start turning the volume up all the way. It's actually probably a good thing that we don't have the antenna hooked up right now, otherwise we would be deafened. There we go. The green light indicates that programming mode is now starting. Let me mute the, the thing now. So since we started with the volume up, that is now programmed. So we just go down the list here for each one and you just hold it down until you see a green light. Okay, and release it. Now that one's programmed. Next thing is seek up and seek down. Now, on my stereo, it was inverted, so instead of holding the up for the up button, I'm gonna hold the down for the up button. So just hold that down, see the light, and it goes off, and then up. There we go. The next one is source slash mode, so hold that down. Okay, and the next one is mute. So now, since I don't have press to talk, I'm gonna use the press to talk button over here for my mute. There we go. The next one is preset up, preset down. I could probably use the same ones, but I'm just going to skip those. Now to skip one, press the volume up instead. There we go. So that skips preset up. Now we're going to preset down, skipping that one as well. And I don't have a power thing for my stereo, so I'm gonna skip that one as well. Same thing with band, play and enter. Same with push to talk, even though I actually have that button, but my stereo can't support it. There we go. On hook and off hook. I actually have those, not that I like Bluetooth for calling. I'd rather use Android Auto for that. So the on hook, there we go. And off hook, there we go. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna skip fan up, fan down because the top stereo works those. So skipping fan up and fan down. And when you're done, if you don't have to go through the whole list or anything, just press and hold this for 10 seconds. And when that is done, the green light will come on and you just let go and the green light will come off. So now that we've verified it works, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the resistor. So go ahead and cut one little bit longer than the other and I'll just slide it in those right two holes. There we are. And so that should tape in there nicely. Cut off the axis wires and then I just gotta cut these down a little bit more. A little bit. One. It's certainly not best practice but if I can pull this off it'll make it a lot easier. Okay, that will keep them all together. Let's just start wrapping it all. The shortcut ultimately didn't work as well as I hoped, and after several tries, I finally got them to stay in after looping the wires around like this. All right, so I'm gonna twist each of these red wires together. One is from the steering wheel control interface. The other is from the speaker interface that connects the stereo to the, to the preamp. Stick that in there. Pinch it together. <clears throat> There we go, just give it a little bit of a tug to make sure that they're snug. There we are. Okay, so now the next thing will be connecting in my USB extension cables. Just take the whole stereo and set it aside for now. And the next thing we're gonna do is remove this panel down here. There we go, and pop it off. Looks like I lost uh, this little plastic connector that may have been on there, so I'll have to fish that in. And if your cigarette lighter didn't initially unplug, 
then just pull that off of there. So I'm going to disconnect the rest of these cords down here. The car might complain a little bit, especially since it's actually running, but it's so hot out and humid. I don't know how you Louisianans deal with all the humidity around here in Missouri. I'm used to dry Colorado and Montana. Now to pull out the hood release, give a good tuck on it and then you can pull the cord out of this slit. Underneath, you can then pull the cord out of this hole. Then unplug the last two connectors. There we go. So now we can take this whole panel out and let's go ahead and start pulling up the upholstery. All right, let's go ahead and take the floor mat out. All right, so just pull that sucker out <laughs> or just completely unwrap around it to attach it again. There we go. We'll also need to pull off these panels over here. Okay, so let's go pop this up. You can just do this with your bare hands. And the next one will be this one here. And that one, again, just pops off. There we are. That's a cool noise. <laughs> okay, next thing will be removing this little footrest here. And you might be able to get it with your hands. Might have to pry it off with a panel remove tool or a flathead screwdriver. Okay, now we can start pulling down the upholstery. Now this will be kind of tricky, getting it past all of the pedals. Uh, there we go. And the whole, the trick here, oh, I need to get it beyond these wires. There we go. And pull the foam up, and there we are. So this is pretty much all the farther we have to do, basically, what we're doing is we're lifting up slack here on the upholstery just enough that we can run the USB cables out from underneath. So now the next thing is we're gonna lift this whole center compartment up. So the first thing is pulling this, the these cup holders off of here. And you just gotta grab both sides of it and pull up. There we go, might have to use a flathead screwdriver the first couple of times. And so that will reveal two screws on both sides. There's one here and then one on the other side. So we just need to unscrew those. There we are. And there's just a little bit of fabric down in here. So just pull that off. And then there are two 10 millimeter bolts at the bottom of that. Sit in there. Okay, with those out, we can lift the whole thing up and we can start running the wires under the upholstery. If you have difficulty, you can also tape them to a coat hanger, but I was able to get them with my hands. First time I tried this. There we go. There we are. So now we can run the USB cables up through a little gap in there and they will be all set to plug into the stereo. So I'm just gonna go straight through the bottom. Since there's nice fabric that was on the bottom of the compartment, it shouldn't be that big a deal. All right, so now we can just run those cords right up in there. There we go. In case someone in the back seat wants to get access to these cords, you wanna have a good deal of slack. And we can just set the whole thing back down. So to line it up, it'll probably be easier to line up these two screws instead of the bolts in the back. Okay. Now that those two screws are in place, we can just pop this back in. There we go, get the wires out of the way, and then just snap that back down. All right, so now we can screw in the bolts back here, back in place, and put the fabric right on top of it so nothing gets lost down in that hole. If you want, you could probably fill it with something or, or tape it up. All right, so, and it's also a bit tricky to get the upholstery back underneath the pedals. Might have to finesse it for a bit. Uh, are. Okay, then take the little plastic connector, pop that back in to hold the upholstery up. There we go. Then fit the upholstery underneath the circuits down here. All right, and then just put this back on there and it should just pop on if you get it in the right position. Connect this panel, make sure that these plastic clips here fit in the metal clips. Back on. Okay. 
There we go. And now the carpet's down. All right, so now the next step is to install the microphone. Now, since this car had a navigation system with voice commands, there is actually a microphone already up in here that we can tap into. So, we need to remove this whole thing from the ceiling. Okay, so there's just a couple of screws up in here. All right, so now there are four plastic connectors that hold it up in here, and you can probably just grab it with your fingers up in here. Otherwise, you need some panel remove tool. Oh, there we go, there's the bottom two. There we go, I've done it a couple of times so far. Then there's just a little wire connector with a tab on the other side that you can just push and pull it off. The microphone is actually right there, right under, underneath this thing. So we can unscrew this circuit board and everything, but the microphone wires go into this circuit board that's enclosed in here. And we could just cut the wires, but if I ever want to resell the car <laughs> and keep my stereo, I don't want to damage the wires. So I'm going to unplug this from the circuit board. This should just come right off. I might have to remove the circuit board after all. Oh, there we go. Sweet, I didn't have to. So then we just need a flathead screwdriver to take off these little flat thingies. Just unclip each of them. Other side, there we go. And of course the other one snapped back down. There we go, put the cover off. There is, oh yeah, when I originally did this, there was a zip tie attaching this wire here to that little plastic tab. So once you break that off, then you can just take the circuit board out. There we are. And then just pull that off. There we go. And we can just tuck the wires into there and tape it up. So I'll just connect this back on here. All right, so here's the wire. We'll leave some slack at the end of this microphone so that in case I ever want to rejoin the wires together. And let's just cut it up. There we go. And then strip the other end. There, now we can strip the white one. Using the smallest. There we go. So we will connect that in there the ground wire with the black. Oh, sweet. I was able to even push some of the white insulation down in there. So let's just loop this around like that and wrap electrical tape all over it. There we go. Let's go ahead and connect the end to the stereo. All right, and that one just goes right in the 2.5 millimeter jack. There we are. Let's call Josh Kingham. Never works as fast as they do in the promo promotional videos. Well, stop! And just to make sure that's not um, this microphone. Screw it up. Ha ha, can't hear that. Hey there. The microphone is working. You want to run the wire up through here. Unfortunately, you can just kind of pull it down. And we'll just leave that all kind of tucked in down there. Now let's pop this back up in here. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. There's nothing in the way, is there? Oh, shoot. It was a little bit too rough with that one. Okay. There we are. That will work nicely good. The light still works. Let's peel off the weather stripping here. There we go. And then we should be able, that'll give us enough flexibility. This panel won't completely come off since the airbag is right there. So you would have to get some needle nose pliers in there to twist a knob, but fortunately we won't have to. We can just continue running the cable up here. So I'm just gonna run this wire back behind the airbag. Should be able to just run it through a gap 
here. All right, there we are. Here's the cable. Now we just need to run this across. Tuck that wire up in there. Man, this means if I ever get into a car accident, this cable might get blown. <laughs> get blown with the airbag and get ripped completely out. But then again, if I get in an art accident that serious, I'm gonna have a lot more worries than the stereo microphone. Just send it right through here. There we are. And then we just gotta plug it back in the back of the stereo. Pop that up in there. And... Here we go. The wire is nice and hidden. <laughs> That's so cool. So now I get to use it. The microphone, like they don't even see it. In my, in my last car, it was just this pimple that was sticking out of the ceiling. Now time to connect everything. Make sure the wiring harness is connected, the antenna, the aux cord, the steering wheel controls and the 3.5 millimeter wired remote port, the microphone and the 2.5 millimeter jack, the Android cable, in my case it's USB port 2, and the iPhone cable in port 1. Also, remember to tape up any loose wires in the back. Now screw in the longer 10 millimeter bolts, then put the multifunction display back into place and snap it in. Remember you want one of the shorter bolts, so the one on the right. And then of course the remaining two longer bolts go on the bottom. Now I'm gonna put my screen back on, Next, I'm gonna put this lower panel back on. Remember to connect in the cigarette lighter and snap all four connectors in place. Then there's also a plastic panel connector to pop in there as well. Now I'm putting on the tray cover. And then I can screw it on with two screws. Then place the bezel on over the screen. Now for the vent covers, note that there are panel connectors on the top, middle, and bottom. For the next vent cover, remember to plug in the parking gear button. Then pop on the top panel. Then for the lower panel, start connecting the wire harnesses. To put the hood release back in, just thread it into this hole. Then give it a tug so it'll slide through the slit and then pop into place. Finish up with the remaining wires and pop the whole panel into place. Then you can screw in its screw and finish with the leftmost screw. Then you can put the last vent cover over on top of it. Ta-da! Okay, Google. Directions to Aldi. Showing results for Aldi. So I am very happy with the stereo right now. But I've had some problems along the way. Starting off, I'm still troubleshooting how to fix this Android Auto error. It almost always happens when I connect it to my phone. But after reconnecting it a bunch of times, it'll eventually work. But a lot of other people seem to be having this problem as well. The cable length seems to be a factor, which is why I have some shorter micro B cables hanging out here that I was testing with. If I can get it working, I'll probably make another video about it. Otherwise, I think I'll switch back to iOS. Another problem is I blew a fuse. So if you don't want to disconnect the 12 volt battery and reinitialize everything, then you may want to have some extras on hand. I actually got about a hundred for five bucks from China. I also had a problem where my parking brake bypass still wasn't letting me watch movies on my stereo. This was because I connected the yellow wire to my wiring harness, which this, I believe, was meant for just the braking pedal. But most of the bypasses out there don't even have this yellow wire, so I just disconnected and then it worked fine. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I'm actually also planning on making a tutorial on how to hardwire in a dash cam so that it'll record in parking mode even while the car is off. So until then, thank you guys for watching. See ya!